The first thing I like about this camera is the zoom and the fast lens. The X10 has a 4 times zoom lens, with a focal length ranging from 28mm to 112mm. It is pretty long in the telephoto range. I stay more on the telephoto side on this camera. It just gives me so much reach and I'm able to shoot in a different style than with any other cameras that I own, so it has been a lot of fun. It is very versatile, from wide-angle landscapes and street photography to close-up portraits and telephoto street photography. And the lens has a fast aperture of f2 to f2.8, more than enough for your usual daytime shooting. I live in a big city, but right around my neighborhood is not really an overpopulated area with lots of people moving around. So it is not the most ideal condition for wide-angle lens street photography, where you get close to people and fill the frame. So whenever I'm walking around my neighborhood, the telephoto capability has helped me get the shots that I've wanted while being stealthy. Next thing I like about this camera is the JPEG Fuji colors. The Fujifilm X10 has a 12 megapixel, 2 3rd inch EXR CMOS sensor, which is pretty small in today's standards, but when it first came out, they say it was a bigger sensor for its size. This sensor, coupled with the EXR technology, contributes to excellent image quality. The camera offers several EXR modes such as high resolution, wide dynamic range, and high sensitivity and low noise, which optimizes image quality based on the shooting conditions. However, I did not shoot in EXR mode because to my understanding, you can only shoot in JPEG in EXR mode. And I like to have full control of my images, so at first, I always shot RAW or RAW plus JPEG. But having said that, after shooting RAW plus JPEG, I much prefer the JPEG files over what I could get with the edits with the RAW files. So eventually, I started shooting only in JPEG. I was mostly in program mode, but the RAW photos coming out of this camera had lots of dynamic range. I was out on a bright sunny day, and the RAW photos were able to keep the details from the really bright highlights. Fujifilm is known for its colors. It is not an overstatement to say that the Fuji gained its popularity because of the color science of their JPEG files and the Fujifilm simulation. The X10 is no exception. It really has its own character which does not resemble any other colors that I've seen from the cameras that I've used in the past. It's really pleasing to the eye with just a hint of a vintage look. The film simulation modes include Provia, which is the standard, Velvia, and Astia, along with a couple of black and white modes. Velvia with its vibrant colors is my favorite so far, but after a short while, it became a bit too much so I turned down the saturation a bit. This is not as many as what we get from today's Fujifilm cameras, but each mode is customizable so that's a plus. Another good feature and a must for this camera is the image stabilization. The image stabilization is pretty good, and it should be, because you are prone to movement when you are shooting with a longer focal length. Even when I was at 112mm focal length, I was able to get sharp image most of the time, so the stabilization is pretty good. The only way to get a blurry image is to miss focus, which we'll get into later. The last thing I like about this camera is the cool design. The Fujifilm X10's design is very similar to the very popular X106. The retro design sets it apart from other digital compact cameras, and I love the all black design as well. A big reason why I got this over the X20 which comes out in silver color only. And it has a sturdy and premium feel. It is small and portable, which is perfect for street photography, travel, and everyday use. Now that we've gone through the positives, Let's dive into what I didn't like, and why I probably won't be keeping this camera. The first thing that I don't like about this camera is the optical viewfinder. While a nice feature, it only covers about 85% of the frame, which may result in slightly off compositions if solely relied upon. Now granted, you can always crop or do whatever in the post to make the slightly off compositions fit, but I just didn't gain much confidence in the optical viewfinder. Not only does it cover only 85% of the view, it does not show me any information in the viewfinder. This is the first camera I've had that does not give any frame lines or focusing information in the viewfinder. So although this camera does have a viewfinder, it does not give me any confidence to shoot with it. I often doubt if my subject is in focus and sharp. 
and this camera takes a bit of a time to focus and the viewfinder is no help with that. And oftentimes, when shooting moving subjects, the camera gives me the red light telling me that the subject is not in focus. So if I'm only looking through the viewfinder, I wouldn't be able to know that. Next thing I don't like is the slow focusing speed. This is a big one. While other features and design of this camera makes it suitable for street photography, the slow nature of this camera makes it a bit of a hurdle to use it in real practice. With the half a second freeze this camera has when it first locks focus, it does get in the way of your shooting sooner or later. And the accuracy of the focus is another thing to worry about, because it often gives me the red square saying the autofocus did not focus correctly. So I can't really shoot with confidence and I miss the moment quite a bit. I brought this camera to Seoul Fashion Week just a few days ago, and I immediately regretted bringing only this camera. The half a second freeze when first locking focus was a real issue. Maybe one third of the time the camera gave me the red light saying it is not in focus. And it only detects human face when you're closer to the subject. Granted, this was not a slow shooting experience. I had to get my shot quick before other photographers got in my way or the model switched poses. But I don't think this camera can be relied upon in important situations. I moved around a lot and I was quick to press the shutter. And on top of that, I use it a lot in telephoto mode, which I'm guessing is harder to focus than on wider lenses. But it is still something to watch out for, because I do get a bunch of autofocus shots on every photo shoot. This camera is more suitable for slow shooting, so your traditional street photography might suffer a bit. Another big reason why I might say goodbye to this camera is the very limited JPEG offerings. Because this camera came out so long ago, if you're shooting color, there are only realistically two film simulation modes, because Provia is the standard. Oops. The X100T, which came out three years ago, or three years after this camera, offers eight film simulation modes, including Classic Chrome, which was a fan favorite when it first came out, with its washed out colors. So compared to moderately modern camera, the x film simulation is definitely lacking, so you're not getting the full Fujifilm experience. Even for black and white, the X100T has Acros, which is this beautifully smooth black and white mode which I loved using back when I had that camera. The X10 has a regular black and white, which is lacking if compared to Acros film simulation. Other small beefs with this camera are the lack of low light capability and the lack of articulating back screen. And this is a small camera, but not really pocketable due to the protruding lens. So that is a little disappointing. I mean, I feel like there are two kinds of cameras out there. One that is pocketable and one that is not. And this is not pocketable. To put it short, would I recommend this camera for $300 plus in 2024? The answer is a no. I know this is not a popular verdict for this camera because everyone who has used it seems to love it. $300 for a 13 year old camera isn't cheap and the Fujifilm camera prices are rising by the day. So maybe by the time you watch this, this camera already has gone up in price even more, making it not worthwhile. But as with any other older cameras, if you don't like it, you can probably sell it for the price you bought it. In Fujifilm cameras cases, you might even sell it for a profit. So that is something to think about as well. I honestly think that this camera is worth about $100 to $150, instead of the $250 that I've paid for it. But the used camera market has been crazy these days. It is easy to carry this camera and it is easy to capture different styles of photography due to the long zoom lens. And it has Fuji colors. But for me, the huge drawback is the slow and inaccurate autofocus. It makes me shoot in a different style where I have my composition ready and waiting for a subject to appear. This is quite limiting completely away from traditional quick snapping street photography that I'm into. But if you're not a run and gun style street photographer and shoot things from afar, this is alright for that use. But after my experience at Seoul Fashion Week, I will probably let go of this camera. So this wraps up what I wanted to say about the Fujifilm X10. If you made it this far and enjoyed this video, or if this video helped you in your decision to whether or not to buy this camera, 
then please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because it really helps out small channels like mine. I post POV street photography videos and travel photography videos along with some gear reviews. That is all. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you in the next one.